ECN show. From Karpata, on Bonaire, Dutch Caribbean, welcome to the GCN show. From St. Kennegan's College Girls Cycling in Auckland, New Zealand. Welcome to the GCN show! from the Grand Andair Hotel in Badia in the Dolomites. Welcome to the GCN Show. This week we are looking at some of the strangest places to ride a bike and we're wrapping up some of the key national championships events from last weekend. Plus we have a brand new Continental Tyres competition and all of your usual favourites with added sunshine and mountains. It's hot isn't it? It's That's gorgeous. Good, nice shades. <sighs> It's not often that we take news from yachts and yachting magazine, but nevertheless, there's been quite a lot of interest recently surrounding the America's Cup catamaran of Team Emirates New Zealand. Go on, I'm intrigued. Well, included in their crew is a former Olympic medal winning cyclist by the name of Simon Van Beltoven, and there's very good reason for his inclusion, and that is that the catamaran's hydraulic systems are now controlled by a static four-man tandem, as opposed to the traditional method, which is the turning of a hand-operated crank. Now, they are the only team who have adopted this relatively innovative piece of engineering but so far it really appears to be working for them. They entered as relative underdogs but as we record this they're just one race win away from winning the America's Cup. Well that is a pretty weird place to ride a bike on board a catamaran but I must admit Dan I'm surprised that that actually hasn't been used yeah, before. I'm surprised as well. I just assumed it was against the rules, but obviously not. Well, there we go. Anyway, we've got another weird place to ride a bike here. Do you remember from our new show just a couple of weeks back? It was the Riviera Water Bike yeah. Challenge in Monaco. So basically riding bikes on the Mediterranean. And there was teams riding water bike challenges for money, to raise money for charity. And just look at some of the names that are actually participated. Formula One royalty, Nico Rosberg and uh, David Coulthard, him of chiseled chin, actual royalty, Prince Albert of Mon Monaco, and cycling royalty, Princess Tiffany Cromwell of Canyon Tram. Queen well. Cromwell. I think it might be Queen Cromwell, yeah. yeah. One of the two. No, no doubt Tiffers will get in touch. But look at Tiffers on board her bike boat or boat bike. I'm not too sure what you call it, but. Since Tiffany's riding, it's probably a speed boat. Good point. Now, one man who is planning on riding somewhere slightly strange, even if he hasn't done it yet, is Sir Chris Hoy. Oh, now, yeah. he is hoping to ride to the South Pole, but he is struggling at the moment to find somebody mad enough to do it with him. Do you know what time of year it is? Uh, no, I don't think the date has been fixed yet. But we are fully booked up. Yeah, we're definitely we? busy. Whenever he's doing it, we're busy. Yeah, I think we are yeah. block booked. Um, talking about places that are weird to cycle, do you know the weirdest place that I've ever ridden? I don't, but I'm sure you're going to tell us all. I am indeed going to oblige. It's my garage. Go on, it's not that weird. Well, it, it was quite weird when I explained. Basically, it was 1998. I was training for the Commonwealth Games in Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia, very hot and humid conditions. And I didn't really have a lot of time to go on a training camp, so I thought, how do I best replicate the humid conditions of that neck of the woods? So, in my garage, I had a tumble dryer, filled it with wet towels, shut the garage door on a hot and sunny day, on a number of occasions, in fact, over a period of a couple of weeks, and trained while the tumble dryer was on. Mm. And I must admit, I sweated buckets, and it, it was great. Yeah, as much as it pains me to say this, uh, that was actually a great idea. That sort of idea is used to this day because it's been proven to work if you're trying to get yourself ready to compete in a very hot climate. So I'm like a tumble dry pioneer yeah, of some sort. Yeah, you sort. are. Well done. Uh, anyway, we would like to know what is the strangest place that you have ever ridden a bike. You can, as ever, leave your comments in the comment section below this video. It's now time for Cycling Shorts. This being cycling shorts, Dan, we are actually going to talk this week about cycling shorts to kick things off and the very thorny issue of black or white shorts. Another issue always rumbles ever forwards and it's Steve Cummings, the freshly minted TT and road champion of Great Britain, who's waded in on the issue with his own Twitter poll, asking people if he should ride in black or white shorts. At the time of recording this, he's got nearly 10,000 votes, thankfully, in my humble opinion, in favour 
of Blackshaws. Mm. Well, last year's champion, Adam Blythe, waded in with a tweet which, well, I won't read it out, but mm. it was quite adamant he should be wearing white shorts, Steve Cummings. As you said, at the moment, it's very much in favour of black. Depending on when you watch the GCN show, you might still have time to vote yeah. if you go over to at Steve O'Cummings. But even if the poll has finished, you can reply, and I'm sure he would love your opinion. Uh, if you want my personal opinion, I mean, Steve's quite a humble guy, isn't he? He is, yeah, yeah. I've worn white shorts before, as a lot of you will know, and they can be quite humbling. So, well, take from that what you will. Anyway, the, one of the most versatile and exciting riders in the world, Mathieu van der Poel, has been at it again. He loves to dip his toe into other disciplines of cycling, and this time, for the very first time in fact, he entered the World Cross Country Marathon Mountain Bike Championships in Germany. And for a kickoff, he just finished off the podium in fourth place, which is an absolutely fantastic and sterling effort for his first attempt to that particular discipline. It was actually won by Alban Lacketer of Austria, who won for the fourth time. But you have to take your hat off to just the fact that that guy loves riding his bike. Yeah. And he just seems to be good at everything. He's a he virtuoso rider. Some rider, isn't he? Yeah. Anyway, on to an even bigger test of endurance, that being the Ram or the Race Across America. That, for many riders, has finished over the course of the last seven days. The winner of the men's solo race was indeed Christoph Strasser for the fourth time in his career. He completed 3,000 miles in a time of eight days and 10 hours, which is really quite incredible. And what puts it into perspective is the distance back to second place finisher Mark Pattinson. 35 hours. Whoa. That's a convincing win, that is. That it? is, that's not exactly a photo finish, is no. it? Uh, meanwhile, the women's solo winner was Sarah Cooper, who completed her event in 11 days and 19 hours. And we want to give a special mention to Andre Kalic. Uh, as we record this, he hasn't yet finished, but he should do by the time this show comes out. He will become the first person to complete the RAM on a hand cycle. Well, that is an absolutely like amazing effort, yeah. but there's been another endurance event that finished over the weekend in the United States. The Trans America, for that event is unsupported. It was won by Evan Deutsch in a time of 17 days and eight hours. Se second place was John Lester, a whole day behind, so another non-photo finish. Yeah. And in third place, and the first woman to finish the event, the epic event was Janie Hayes. Fantastic stuff. We're going to end this week's cycling shorts with something just a little bit different. Now, Dan, have you ever been on a cake? Not that I know of, no. Well, you have now. Right. Check this out. Adam Welton from Toronto in Canada has got in touch via Instagram. Now, for his 30th birthday, his very kind girlfriend made him a series of cycling-themed cupcakes. Okay, so as you can see from the pitch, there's a picture of pizza garn and the cupcake on the left-hand side. Top right, there's one of Froomey. Then the remaining four cupcakes are adorned with pictures of you, me, Lasty, and Sai. Wow. That's genius, isn't it? That's some company that we're keeping there. I, I wonder know. who he ate first. Ooh, that's a good question. Mm. And I wonder if you'd put it all in one or just bit half of the face in, off, sort of like, like you do jelly babies. Probably had one of your ears. Oh, God. Next up, we've got a cool new competition from our tyre partners, Continental. Yes, we have indeed. So 10 of you have the opportunity to win, firstly, a set of these, which are their Grand Prix Force and Attack, which are front and rear specific tyres, which are basically the aftermarket version of the Pro Limited tubular tyres, which you see used on a whole host of World Tour team bikes. Now, the tyres use the black chilli compound, which basically reduces rolling resistance, reduces the chance of punctures, but increases grip, so pretty much everything you want from a tyre. Yeah, now along with this set of tyres, you will also, if you are lucky enough to win, receive a set of Continental kit as well. So the bib shorts here and the jersey, which is a very cool prize indeed. Well <laughs> worth entering, I think you might say. You can find details on how to do this by following the link, link should I say, which you'll find in the description below this video. This week, Gerard Vrooman, the co-founder of Cervelo has announced his first new aero frame design in six years in the form of the 3T bike called the Strada, which has some really cool new features and integrations. One of those features being the fact that there is no front derailleur, i.e. it's not even an option to have one. Uh, they've gone with a SRAM one by drivetrain and that lack of front derailleur means that it's more aero, it's lighter and I also think it's a lot neater if you have a look at it around that part of the bike as well. It's a disc brake only frame set which means they have have been able to design the frame and forks around that fact. It's allowed, allowing 30 millimeter tires, but as you can see, when you fit 30 millimeter tires, they are very, very close to the frame and forks, which apparently further increases the aerodynamics. Now we know the benefits of wider tires, they're more comfortable, they have less rolling resistance, but one of the drawbacks 
is that they are less aerodynamic. But Vrooman claims because the bike has been entirely designed around wider tyres, that is no longer an issue. No, it's very interesting, isn't it? Uh, we understand also, although we haven't seen any images yet, that they are in the process of designing their very own 12-speed cassette, which could wow. uh, get past some of the issues associated with the one by group set, i.e. if you've got a big enough ratio of gears to get over all sorts of terrain, that you have a big jump between each gear in terms of your cadence, whereas this is apparently going to be fine for both. You're not going to have much of a jump between gears, but you've got an adequate ratio for steep climbs and downhills too. It is the week leading up to the Tour de France now, which means that most of the national cycling federations around the world hosted their national championships the weekend just gone. As ever, we haven't got time to go through each and every victor of each and every race, but here are a few of the highlights. Well, let's kick things off in the United States, where everybody's new favourite bike rider, Larry Warbass, took his second pro win in two weeks. So he'll be wearing the stars and stripes for his team Aqua Blue for the next 12 months. And meanwhile, Amber Niebuhr, 42 years of age now, did the double, so she won the TT and the road event to add to her world TT title that she won last year in Qatar. Yeah, that was very impressive Amazing. indeed, wasn't it? And meanwhile, in the Netherlands, it was Raymond single down with Team Sunweb who took a narrow victory over Wouter Whipper. Uh, but what uh, took me by surprise was the fact that Tom Dumoulin was there yeah. supporting him. I thought he was supposed to be on a well-earned break. He Not also... only did he help single down to his victory, a few days previous, he also retained his national time trial title. As you might expect, he had a load of support from fans on the side of the road, including these fans. Mm. I think you can do your own translations for that picture which Tom tweeted. Tweet of the week? Gotta be. Jolion Dora took her fourth Belgian title and AG2R's Oliver Nason just edged out in a really exciting finish set Van Mark to win the men's Belgian title. But surprisingly, Lotto Soudal and Quickstep Floors, the two World Tour teams, could only manage, well, eighth place was the best for those yeah, two Yeah, that was a surprise. I wouldn't have wanted to have been in the meeting as a rider in those two teams after that championship. Not I at bet all. that was not a pretty place to be. No. Uh, one team which was very happy though was Team FDJ, who took the men's and the women's events down in the French National Championships. Uh, the women's was won by Charlotte Braval, whilst the men's was won for the second time in his career by Arno Demar, who managed to beat Nasser Buani in a sprint finish. However, I was looking at the start list for that race. Demar started with 19 teammates. I saw some of the pictures. That's a, that's a lead out and a half, isn't it? I mean, I mean, imagine now the pressure on his shoulders, all those teammates. True, he had to deliver, and true, he, he did still. it, didn't he? Well, there you yeah. go. Obviously in great form ahead of the tour, and another man is in great form ahead of the tour. And at the time of filming this, has been selected for the tour, is Dimension Data Steve Cummings. Now, he won the, both the TT and Men's British Championships. But what makes the whole thing more remarkable for me is the fact that the TT which he won was his first race back since breaking his scapula and in pelvis, the tour, right? and pelvis in the Tour de Basque Country back in April. But as we know, Steve Cummings is one of the best trainers out there but a lot of it was done very much like Matt Heyman when he went on to Imperial Bay on Zwift so how yeah. cool is that a computer game that can get you fit to win some of the biggest bike races in the world yeah fantastic I story reply to a tweet of mine which said that they knew that Steve was in great form because he passed them on Watopia Island uh, and also I love the fact that his on-screen Steve Cummings it looks exactly the same doesn't super it? Look arrow, at isn't it look at that yeah no hair I guess that's easy to do, but it does yeah. look exactly like Steve Cummings. Uh, right, down in Italy, there are a couple of very popular winners. Elisa Longo Borghini winning the women's event, Fabio Aru of Astana taking the men's, and he'll win, uh, wear that famous Tricolore jersey at the Tour de France in the coming weeks. Uh, meanwhile, down in Portugal, I'm not sure if you heard this, Matt, but defending time trial champion Nelson Oliveira of Movistar, who's won the time trial nationals for the last three years, didn't actually start the event because there was a last minute change to the start times and nobody thought to tell him. Oh, that's just, I'd have a, I'd have a recount, I'd do that again. Yeah. That's just awful. Poor old Nelson. We'll finish our national champs roundup with another rider who's done the double, in fact, for the second time, and that's Ryan Mullen of Cannondale Drapak, winning the Irish TT and the road race. And we're also going to award him a little triple, really, because he gets this week's Wattage Bazooka because of his quite, well, staggering stats in both the TT and the road race. Dan, hit us with yeah. Ryan's stats. Nuts, Unbelievable numbers. So in the time trial, he averaged 439 watts. And then in the road race, he averaged 339 with a, a normalized power of 405 watts, which are staggering stats, I think you have to say. Uh, so he's got the main wattage bazooka. Uh, no viewer wattage bazooka this week because we want to give the second one to Victoria Williamson, a British track rider. Uh, she, around 18 months ago, had a horrific crash at an event where she broke her neck, her back, her pelvis. It's been a very, very long road to recovery. But just the other day, she did this sprint test on a watt bike. Have a look at this. 
Oh, that's just fantastic to see. Well done, Victoria. Yeah, Good that see you must back. have taken a lot of determination to come back over the last year and a half. Well done, Victoria. Uh, I was wondering, Matt, though, whether any of the national champions did a celebratory bead-on technique, as shown in our nine magnificent ways to drink from a bead-on video. Of course it did. I'm just surprised we didn't see any more photos of it on social media, yeah. to be honest with you. But of course, that'd be quite normal, really. Must have done, must have done. Yeah. Uh, underneath that video, incidentally, there were quite a few of you who wanted to see some outtakes from the lob. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but Matt and I did that first time, so there are no outtakes to show. Oh. It's time now for hack forward slash bodge of the week. Kick it off, Dan. Uh, yeah, Alex Dyer found this hack in Morro Bay, California. It's faux bamboo bike. Uh, it's a, almost completely made of wood. What I think is wow. fantastic is that saddle. I mean, look at the size of it. It looks like a huge brook saddle, doesn't it? It's like a chopper saddle, but it looks like that. It's the kind of bike that Tarzan maybe could have made in his time. <laughs> yeah. Well, this one uh, is from en he Eric Hendrickson and found this crutch attached to this bike. Now, this is one of the most incredible things I have ever seen. The crutch itself forms a top tube, almost like a, an era for a mudguard and a rack at the same time. Yeah. That's a real piece of handiwork. It's kind of a bodge, but he's done a good job of it. No, yeah, it, it kind of looks effective, yeah. <laughs> Uh, right, moving on, we've got this one in on Twitter from Subflux, floating laptop for when he's doing uh, his indoor training, which looks more outdoor, to be it honest. It does look like he's in the middle of a forest somewhere, but uh, it does look pretty good. Uh, and next up, we have this from Kenmore Bikes Brews over on Instagram. Uh, a worn out old chain that took me 2,000 miles to my first double century. Now, it's his favorite belt buckle. That's actually pretty cool. Yeah, like yeah that's that. quite cool. Uh, and finally, we have possibly the oh bodge of gosh. the century from Caleb Nur. Uh, definitely some hacking went into this bike seen outside an Edwards uh, Colorado bike shop. Do you reckon that even works? Well, I'd like to see somebody riding that. So basically, he's, you, he's powering the wheel that's in contact with the floor via the back wheel and then a series of pulleys and chains, isn't he? I mean, that is a whole new definition of a three-wheeler trike, isn't it? That's amazing. Uh, we'll keep Impressive. the hacks and bodges coming using the hashtag GCNHack on Twitter or Instagram. Mind officially blown, Dan. Caption competition now, your chance to win a GCN Camelback water bottle. Last week's photo was this one from the Tour of Switzerland and the winner is Jacob Adam, who put caption don't get a slash in your tyres. Very well done. We see what you did there. Get in touch with us on Facebook with your address and we'll get that bottle to you ASAP. And hopefully you'll get a few more likes. There's only one at the time of going to press here. Uh, but yeah, definitely deserves more likes. Very witty indeed. Now next up we have this picture of Peter Sagan, again at the Tour of Switzerland with a bead on. I'll start you off. This is my version of the GCN Air bead on. Mm. If you can do better than that, be please better, leave right? your captions in the comment section down below and we will pick a winner this time next week. On the channel this week, on Wednesday, we've got our top descending mistakes. On Thursday, we have our top 10 riders to watch out for at the Tour de France with loads of extra cool added value by the, the medium stats, yeah. of stats. And then on Friday, we have Ask GCN. Uh, yes, yeah, Saturday's Pro Bike will be coming straight from the Tour de France. We're last in Sire heading soon. Uh, on Sunday, we take a look at how Team Sky use their indoor trainers. Bucket, bucket for Matt. Monday, we're back in the maintenance set. And then on Tuesday, it's the GCN show, which next week will be coming again straight from Alta Badia, where we will have just finished the Maratona de les Dolomites. So we might be presenting for the very first time actually laid down yeah. on that one. Uh, as a bonus, then, you will be getting extra content this coming week from both Simon Lasty, who are at the Tour de France in the lead up to that huge race, and from Matt and myself, who will be here uh, in Alta Badia for that entire week. Keep your eyes out on social media as well, because we'll be doing a couple of live videos too. Yeah. Oh, incidentally, times. Matt, yeah. uh, before we finish with this segment, oh, yeah. I got complimented for the first time ever on my pronunciation. What word was that then? Dusseldorf, Dusseldorf. In the Tour de France preview show, Dusseldorf. Hopefully I got it right again, but Dusseldorf. I've never been complimented on it before. That was very good, that was. Thanks, I must admit, I'm mightily impressed. Dusseldorf. Extreme Corner. 
Uh, yeah, this week's Extreme Corn uh, comes from one of our friends over at the Global Mountain Bike Network, that being Blake Sampton, who's been pulling off some incredible tricks yes. at the Crankworx Whip-Off event in Leger. Yeah, nothing to do with ice cream, by the way. He was whipping up a storm, wasn't he? That was so good. France. Yeah, you could stick a flake in it and some strawberry sauce. <laughs> uh, right, well, that's almost it for this week's GCN show. But just to let you know, we've got some brand new merchandise at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com, including some casual wear in both sky blue and grey, which looks pretty cool. There's a sale on. All items in the sale have at least 25% off. And we've got complete stock now of the fan kit, which includes a women's specific kit as well. And as well as all that lovely stuff, to celebrate July, we've got some new yellow logo GCN kit it in as well and once you've done some shopping if you haven't already you can subscribe to the global cycling network it's absolutely free do that by clicking on the globe somewhere in the middle of this screen now for my six climbing mistakes how about clicking just down here yeah or if you missed Sai in france having a look at mavic's pretty innovative new tubeless mm. tire system you can click just down here don't forget to share and like <laughs>